Happy Palm Sunday. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you. But that will not stop us from worshiping together today. Welcome to our online service. I'm Leah Molnix. I'm the worship leader here at Heartland Community Church. And this is our Palm Sunday online service. Moving to our next song, I read this week that the actual Hebrew meaning of the word Hosanna is save me, rescue me. And this song talks about that, how he cries out that I need you, Jesus. It's the cry of all of our hearts every day, the gratefulness we have for the eternal gift that we didn't earn, we don't deserve but he died on the cross to give us anyway. So please join us this morning together as we cry out to Jesus together. Take 
As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and he'll return it soon. The two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street, tied outside the front door. <clears throat> as they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus had told them to say and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and others spread leafy branches that they had cut into the fields. Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting, praise God, blessing on the one who comes in the Lord, in the name of the Lord, blessing on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, praise God in his highest heaven. So Jesus came to Jerusalem and went into the temple. After looking around carefully, at everything, he left because it was late in the afternoon. Then he returned to Bethany with the 12 disciples. Mark 11, 1 through 11. Good morning, Harlem Community Church family. Everyone watching online, so glad to have you guys here today. Palm Sunday, beginning of Holy Week. And we're going to walk through the week a little bit. I'm going to have a few more videos this week as we watch Jesus as he makes his way to the cross. But today... We're going to talk about his entrance into Jerusalem. As Nick read, Mark 11, 1 through 11, it's a triumphant entry, it's a triumphant entrance, this parade. All the people are putting down palm branches and their coats and they're celebrating. And that's what I'm used to, it's probably what you're used to. It's how we celebrated at church. Kids come down the aisles singing Hosanna in the highest. The adults are waving palm branches. The worship team's got them up there when they're singing. And that's the way I'm used to it. There may have been years we didn't do it that way, but that's what's in my head right now. And I didn't grow up in church. I was 35 when I accepted Jesus. But that's just used what I'm used to seeing. But then, when I think the sermon that I wrote was done, because I wrote it about the praise and the celebration and the awesome time everybody was having. But then I read in a little bit deeper and found out what the word Hosanna means in Hebrew. And it actually means to cry out, to plead, to beg for someone to save you. So I'm thinking, well, how does this match up with my praise sermon? I actually wrote three sermons this week, just so you know, uh, to make sure I got this right for you guys. Make sure I got it right for me. But so I got this desperation and I got this celebration. So I'm thinking, it'd be like today if you were in a fire and the firemen are outside, they're trying to help you. You're crying out, help me, help me. But at the same time, in this desperation, you're dancing and you're laughing and you're having fun. Right in the middle of the slum, right in the middle of this fire, right in the middle of this rescue. So I'm thinking, no, it's two different things. It can't be the same. So I start to question this triumphant entry. Because I know there's an element of desperation now. The sound of anxiety and pleading. Families crying out to Jesus. Moms, dads, children. Because they didn't want to be under the rule of the Romans. They didn't want to be oppressed by the religious systems. They just wanted normal jobs. They wanted their kids to feel safe without the threat of violence hanging over them all the time. They were desperate. They wanted real peace. And I began to realize just how easy it would have been to preach my praise sermon. And I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's a sermon that's preached a lot. It's tradition. Um, but I don't know if that tradition matches up with what God wanted me to preach today. And maybe, the more I dug into this, maybe we don't want to see what actually happened that day, what was actually going on during this triumphant entrance. So the first sermon, all about praise and celebration. Then I get to the meaning of Hosanna, 
And I start writing the sermon about the desperation, about the pleas, about the people crying out to Jesus. So I finally think I have it. It must be about this desperation. That's what Hosanna means. But what if it's both? What if there is something to it? What if it's both? But then I see Jesus is weeping. And I'm like, what is going on? So I wasn't done yet. I still had to work on this. I mean, I could have been done. I could have made good work. I could have used either of them. And we could just sing our songs and wave our branches at home, if you have branches at home. Um, and this went with the honor and tradition that we're used to. But if you know me, I'm not really a traditional pastor. In my office, filming this right now. I'm actually gonna go to a couple other spots and film today. Let's get a little bit different backgrounds for you guys. And, um, but I want to know the truth. I wanna know what really happened that day. And spiritually, for your sake, for my sake, I will always choose truth over tradition. So let's look into this a little further. So I'm praying, and I'm thinking, God, which message do you want me to tell them? What are you trying to show me? And I'm praying, and I'm putting myself in this prayer route. I'm putting myself in the scripture. And I'm trying to get the intention of the people's hearts. And I can hear them, and I can see them. And one group's like prisoners, and they see the guard coming with the keys. And they're excited. They're like, come, set me free. Open the door. The other group is like, they haven't eaten for two weeks. And they see a food truck coming with free meals written on the side. They're like, come and feed me. We're hungry. Hosanna. Please help us. And I noticed that uh, it's not that they wanted to accept Christ in their hearts, that they really knew who he was. It was more they wanted the selfish desires of their own hearts, their own needs. It was all about them. They wanted to be released from the Romans. They wanted to take over. They wanted to change the religious system. They wanted to just be free of everything, and they wanted someone to give that to them. But it was physical. It was temporary. It wasn't eternal. It wasn't what Jesus was here for. And the more I thought about it, it was like a punch in the stomach. It was that they couldn't see Jesus at all. Not the real Jesus. Not the one that came to save them. Because he wasn't who they wanted him to be. And the soon the cries of Hosanna would turn to cru or signs of crucify him. And put him on the cross to die. Because their hearts didn't belong to him. They belonged to the world. And all I can see during this time is my Savior with tears in his eyes riding this colt in the town knowing that their hearts were hard knowing how far away they were from God. Knowing the destruction that was coming. And the colt made sense to me, donkey or colt, whatever you want to choose, but it was a humble animal. When Jesus was humble, he came to serve. It wasn't like a white horse where they just came in riding in the town, righteous and victorious from battle and going to take over the Romans. He came to the town humble. The thing that I was questioning was colts are just a couple years old. Um, donkeys, same way, they can't be ridden. They don't. They're not obedient. You can't just ride them. Usually, there's a rope held onto their mouth, around their head on a harness, and they're pulled into town. They're directed where to go. So the image I was seeing was more like Jesus being brought in the town as a criminal. Not so much that they were receiving him as a king. 
and maybe I'm way off here, but this is what I feel God is trying to tell me. This is what I feel God wanted me to tell you today. And in the words of Luke 19, 41, so he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city, he wept over it. In John 1, 11, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Jesus was crying because he could see their hearts. He knew they were gonna reject him. He was coming to his own people. He had images flashing in his mind of future events, when the temple would be destroyed, when the people would be destroyed, all because they would not embrace him, all because they were unwilling to embrace the kingdom that Jesus offered. And he wept for them, he wept for that city. So after writing the first two sermons and figuring things out through prayer, my message today, if you don't get anything else out of this, just remember this part. Don't miss your opportunity. Do not miss your opportunity. God gave them every opportunity, the greatest opportunity they could ever have to receive Jesus, the promised Messiah, the light of the world, the bread of life, the good shepherd who was with them to guide them, walk among them in the flesh and blood, and he taught them. But their eyes were blinded by unbelief, it was so deeply ingrained in them, so they rejected him, and it led to destruction. They cried out in desperation, and they begged to be delivered, but Jesus couldn't save them, and that sounds crazy. But there's one thing that Jesus can't do, the creator of the world, cannot do. He cannot force our freedom. He cannot force our free will. He cannot make us choose him. We have to make that decision on our own. And I really want you to feel what Jesus was feeling as he was tear-filled eyes coming into this town, seeing the people, knowing he couldn't save them, knowing they were too far away, their hearts were too hardened. They were only concerned with what they wanted. He says, if only, if only you had known what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. Even the words, if only, are so important because even though the destruction hadn't happened yet, he's talking about it as if it has. He's talking about it as a past event, but it hasn't happened yet. But he's saying if they would know it, it wouldn't have happened. They missed their opportunity so blinded by what they wanted Jesus to do for them, they missed what Jesus wanted to do in them and through them. They traded physical needs for spiritual needs that Jesus came there to give them. If they only knew who he really was, if he only knew why he was there. So where are you today? Where are you in your relationship with Christ? Is it that you know all about him? You've read about him? You know the book inside and out? You've been taught who he is, just like the religious people maybe? But Jesus walked right past them. He rode right by them on that colt. Or is it that maybe you just pray to him a couple times a year when things really get hard? Go to a few services here and there, but you still feel disconnected in your life. You have an opportunity today. Don't miss your chance. Don't miss the opportunity like they did. we heard about today in the story. The people that knew so much about him, they heard about him their whole life. They knew all the prophecies down to the cult that he would ride in the town of. And they still, their hearts were so hardened, their selfish ambitions that they missed him. I pray for eyes to be open today to who he is, especially during this time. And I'm not gonna use the coronavirus as an excuse. I'm not trying to scare you into faith because that doesn't work or push you into faith. It's a personal decision that you have to make yourself. I just know in my life, I wouldn't know where I'd be if Jesus wasn't at the center. If he hadn't come and transformed my heart, my life, I'd probably be drunk somewhere going job to job, have little or no relationship with my kids. Somebody got tired of hearing me lie to them, and not show up for things, I'd be lost. 
I'm so grateful for Jesus to come into my life, that he opened my eyes to see who he is, that I have that peace that surpasses understanding. I have that assurance through the power of the Holy Spirit living in me and through me of where I'll go when I leave this world. So it doesn't scare me. I'm not of this world. I belong to him. So I just want to pray for anybody today who does want to accept Christ into their life on this Palm Sunday. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity that we have. Um, for those who have not accepted you into life, maybe there's those that want to recommit their lives to you, Lord. If they do, just have them repeat this simple prayer. Jesus, I am a sinner. I confess my sin. I believe you died on the cross to forgive me for my sin. I believe you were put in the tomb and were resurrected after three days. I believe that that resurrection power through the Holy Spirit is available to me. Lord, I accept your gift of eternal salvation. I promise to live for you all the days of my life. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Have an awesome week. And we'll see you next week.